And we can bump a little on the way up. Oh. I love this song. I've been listening to it so much lately. Jesus. This should be hella texty. This whole street, when I moved here with my wife Anne 14 years ago, none of this was like this. And now we are the hottest property in the United States, Highland Park, California. I was born in Los Angeles, so I know these streets. Pedalsandeffects.com is my website that I started in 2012. I was backstage on Mars Volta with Marcel. I was always kicking it with Marcel. We'd always just be on the laptops, board backstage. And I don't know, for some reason I was looking up domain names and I went Pedals and Effects and it existed and I bought it. And I thought like maybe I'll start a website where I review pedals because I hated everything I saw on the internet. I hate blues licks through distortion pedals or overdrive. That drives me crazy. Yeah, then I decided, I started making videos and then when I saw that there was an audience for it, I started asking my friends to be on it. So I had like Scott Schreiner from Weezer because he understands fuzz really well on bass. Jonathan Hischke, who's one of my idols. So then Nick Reinhardt came in one day and I filmed him and I went, what? This dude is bananas. He's the craziest guitar player I've, I, I've ever been around. So I asked him if he wanted to kind of help me out. And he, he's agreed to. And so now Nick and I do pedalsandeffects.com. What's up, man? Why am I even wearing these glasses? Oh, those are fly. Are those Varnays? What is that? We're waiting. You know what I mean? This is, this is, it's not a guitar center. You're not supposed to be open right on time. Here we are. Yes, we are. Like I'm showing up late. In the faith Like that? Hey, I'm moving slow today. It's 11 ish to 7 ish every day. Candy store. I have a lot of this, but imagine that. Ew. We are in my favorite music store in the United States it's called Future Music, and it just happens to be in Highland Park, California. And Jack is the owner. Met Jack years ago because his shop used to be in uh, in Hollywood on Sunset Boulevard, and I would go in there and buy stuff um, with Omar. Omar would drop a ton of loot buying pedals and synths, and I'd drop, buy pedals. And I mean, I've always pretty much, you know, if you say something sounds good, and then I just take it out to my studio, mess with it, and then I always end up getting it. Because there's certain things that, there's sleepers that you don't know when you first come into the pedal game. Mm -hmm. I think, um, I mean, Ross is a classic example. To have a closed mind in this is absolutely the stupidest thing you can do because you have to make up your mind about what's great. Like, you know, what right. we were just goofing on the LA metal pedal. That thing is amazing. But people would turn their nose up because of what it said. And right. then, you know, when, when metal guitar sounds died, everybody abandoned them. And so this whole world of amazing sounding stuff, just because the pedal says metal on it doesn't mean you're shredding. That's right. stupid. Like the grunge pedal. Yeah, it doesn't mean you play grunge. Yeah. You know? Yeah, get some um, jacked up sound with it. Yeah, yeah, and it's it's just, it's dumb, you know? And so you have to keep an open mind, but I think this is also a, a principle you have to apply to all of this. Because if right. you start digging in your heels or appreciating opinions other than your own and other than your own experience, you're missing it. Right. You have to have an open mind. You know, to me, build quality is essential in things. Cause Definitely. I don't care Definitely. how good it sounds. If it's made like crap, I have no interest in it. All right, Nick, cry baby. I got it for you. Literally how 
I do it every friggin' day. Pedal in the back pocket. The dreams come true. Five Star Sound Labs. Home of pedals and effects. Oh, I just dumped a bunch of gear off in there, so it's gonna be crowded again. Not too bad. Pretty much most of my bases, maybe a few are out right now. Jonathan Hitchkey's got a few of them. Um, this is my newest purchase, most recent purchase, I should say, not new. Most recent. Got this in Italy, it's an Italian SG base, EBO base. Italian. It says somewhere in it made in Italy. I don't know. But anyway, um, the reason why I knew it was Italian, what well, gave me it what gave it away to me? Is it the bridge? Something was similar to the Goya bass that I had. So either way, this bass is dope. I'm short scale, sounds sounds super thumpy. Love it. And then of course my main fretless, which I will play through today, because anytime I do demos or anything, it's my main fretless. 1970. Fretless P wants bases. Look who just showed up. Oh, I know why you're here. You came here for your pedal. You know, Nick? Hey, what's up, dude? Hey, man. How you been? Good to see you. Good to see you. How are you? Everything's good. What's up? Yeah. You're in my segment now. Radical. I bought you. Oh, shit. I bought you. I put that up there and he said, you buy it for me? And I'm like, you know, because he, he, he tends yeah. to buy you stuff that's super good deals to me. Yeah. And he always bugged me that I spend too much. Yeah. So I go, you wouldn't want me to buy you that. I'll spend too much. Okay. Awesome. All right, then. Social life killer environment. <laughs> definitely, definitely, definitely. So yeah, this is a lifetime's worth of uh, finding instruments that I love. Everything goes into my uh, Universal Audio Apollo 16, so I can add EQ compression on recording from it. I don't really need any or too many Mojo devices in to record because the instruments are plenty of that already. So I don't really need particular pre to get color, you know right, what I mean? Right. They have plenty of color on their own. There's reverb on the on the DAW, but and then it's like a weird texture, you know, and it's supposed to go along. The way that I have it now, they're not all in tempo, but I usually have everything coming in and then depending on what I'm fucking around with it just goes for a few days or whatever and it's usually independent ideas you know and I right now I think I, I tuned them all just to give an idea of what it usually is but uh, I think on one I have a yeah so there's a kick
There's a the spring reverb built in in it. That this is going into a delay. This is uh, this is all a, uh, this is a, a Dambukla instrument uh, from the mid '70s. I would say it's probably '76, '77. And this uh, delay is a prototype of the first voltage-controlled digital delay. No shit. And it's a uh, it's kind of a crazy, uh, super dirty sounding. You can hear the, you know, the, the white noise. See, it's kind of like mixing. You can mix in here. Right. You know, there's a, each channel has its own oh, EQ. That bass drum sounds dope. And it's yeah, yeah it's uh, it's just uh, you know, just done with envelopes and, and whatnot. There's an, and it goes into a pitch of a an oscillator here. Yeah. So you can tune it to the bass if you want to. And there's a snare. Some weird hi hat thing. Which is there. This is this there. is just Van Halen, but there is one rogue Vince Neal for some reason. But everything else is just Van Halen pins. What the fuck? Shit, this is the best. With the, Dude, look at the, the like a feather? Earring. Yeah. All right, so this is this was it, man. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you guys for stopping by. So you be good.